Forget Me Not, a wonderful movie that George Kaysen and I are going to review here today on the, the movie show in Think Tech Hawaii. So I'm looking forward to this discussion because I think this movie is really special. Not everybody feels that way. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a lousy rating. Um, and maybe they just don't know how to, how to review a movie anymore. Um, but George and I both like this one, and I'm going to let him start off by describing it's, it's Forget Me Not. It's an English movie in recent years, and it stars, um, what was her name? Genevieve O'Reilly as Eve Fisher and Tobias Menzies, they're both English actors, uh, as Will Fletcher. And you get to know them down to their boots in this movie. So George, what is the movie about? It's basically a 24 hour time frame with these two, Eve and Will, their interaction, getting to know each other. And it starts off, she's working as a barmaid in a bar and he's like, an occasional musician that plays there. And you can see initially she sort of likes him, you know, his music and likes his looks. So just like usually women were the ones who make the decision, not the men, who, who they want, you know. So she, um, you know, and, and then he inadvertently leaves his guitar there, you know, it's sidetracked. So she calls him, you know, that, that you left your thing here and I'm going to, uh, Keeping it safekeeping for you. So meantime, they segue in. He's back home. It starts off really interesting. He's there in his bathroom sink. He's got a razor blade and a pills, you know. So you're wondering, what is this guy going to commit suicide? You know, that's that's basically what they're that you know, but they don't fill in everything initially. So then he's looking out his window, and he, you know, in the bathroom instead of the window. And he sees Eve walking with his guitar, right? in front of the street and this drunk in the, in, the, in the bar that had been harassing Eve is jumping her trying to rape her or whatever you know so he runs outside and punches the the drunk right and saves her right and then he says you know it's not safe on these streets because the, the drunk runs away so I want to accompany you home and she said no no at first he said no I think it's better to be safe so eventually you know, they get, they start walking around London, you know, that that's what happens for like 24 hours overnight. And they start to get to know each other a little better, right? And it's like, like I was telling my, it's a cat and mouse, just like most relationships, men and women. It's like the birds, and you know, when there is a mating dance, right? He says something, she says, she doesn't understand where he's coming from. He doesn't understand where she's coming from initially. And then little by little, like you like, the pieces start to fall in place. She tells him a little bit about her background, her parents. He tells her eventually about his parents. But the punchline is not until the end. Don't tell it yet. Don't I tell will, it yet. I will not tell it. We and have to then, set the stage before you do that. Yeah. And uh, he, he, the next morning, he goes with Eve to visit her grandmother who raised her, right? And her mother it seems extensively had left her father and married this prominent wealthy man you know so and then sort of abandoned the Eve, right so she was raised by by her grandmother you know alone right a mother's mother right and uh, then you hear about um, will's thing will's father was in iraq somewhere you know in the war the, the, the gulf war and he he died he got ambushed by him. ISIS, right, or something. And then he eventually lets her know that his mother, first he told her that her, his mother broke, died of a broken heart. But that was what he told her initially. Later, he tells her that his mother committed suicide because of depression. So then they go back, they, they get, they, 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 they're walking around. She was to be going, going to be going to a party. So uh, he, you know, he accompanies her because of her, her own safety. Later, he tells her he didn't really didn't want to go with her. He really didn't want to be with her. So her, her feminine feelings, like, what do you mean you don't want to be with her? She didn't understand him. I mean, it, unless you understand what's happened at the end, you will not understand his actions. You will understand more her actions because she's reacting like a typical female, you know, 
uh, when she does something, she thinks she's being rejected. But you don't understand who he I, is. I don't think she's a typical female. Well, you know, for me. Go ahead. The, but go ahead. I, well, we can discuss this. His reaction, her rea the way she reacted to what he was doing was she thought she was being rejected. That's what I, you know. And there was a time when they were making love, you know, they're going to be having sexual relations. And she went for his belt, you know, to take off his pants and put his hand there. He didn't want to have sex with her. So she reacted very angrily. I mean, you know, I mean, here he's like, she's, he's coming on to her, right? And then he's, you know, playing hard to get and then not doing it. That's what I mean typical female she was you know she felt hurt okay so at the end i'm going to let you segue into oh they oh they, they go to a, a home where her grandmother is and there's a doctor there african-american very smart uh, uh, asking the grandmother questions to determine the level of her alzheimer's right but this you don't understand the whole thing about how that place is and then there's things here that one of the reviews said they had uh, the two of them, Eve and Will, are in a restaurant, and they've got to, uh, two men in front of them playing chess, right? You don't really understand how that plays into it. I don't. Maybe you understand that. So I'll let you segue into the to the punchline. Hmm. Well, let me begin and, and sort of take another look sure. at the you know the the, the storyline as you described it. Um, you knew from the outset that he was he was a little old um, to be playing guitar and gigs in bars. There was something funny about it, you know. Thirty-five. And and he was uh, he had a nice look about him, but you can't say he was handsome. Um, and he, you know, you, you could, you know, he he didn't dress or behave himself in a in an ordinary way for a man of uh, what he thirty-five or forty. Um, and she was um she was a, a pretty woman um but what was she doing with the bar and uh what was she you know why why was she attracted to this this uh this gig worker um guitar player who really didn't seem to have any substance um and uh it's just fate brought them together as you said on the street with the trunk and he, he saved her at some risk to himself drunk was going to attack him um so they begin walking and then it spits and starts you know um i'll walk you this far and then i'll walk you that far and they ran into all these um london nightlife street scenes uh and each one of these things you know taught them about each other uh, which is very interesting and so the conversation is brilliant i mean the the screenplay is very good and they um it's not a lot of words, but it's carefully chosen words. And he's kind of quiet, and she is um, interested in him, um, but he is, he is um, giving her these monosyllabic answers and, and dropping little breadcrumbs about uh, who he really is. And you have to listen to it carefully to see who he really is and who she really is and why she's interested in this fellow who, is so is so vague and uh, hard to find um and um it is it's like you have to see the movie twice you do you have to see the movie twice to watch the breadcrumbs because as we have already mentioned um you know the end of the story is is a kind of a mind blower and um you never expect it coming at you but if you watched it a second time you would you would see it coming at you you would see all those breadcrumbs that, uh, many little hints that come out, which you don't catch the first time. I, I, I think we learned a lot about London, uh, what it's like to walk around London in the middle of the night. Nobody was there in those streets. They, uh, they didn't feel threatened except by that drunk, but he was somebody that she knew and who knew her. Otherwise, there was nobody who uh, um, you know, threatened them in any way. In fact, people were pretty friendly. Uh, and there was a lot of, what do you want to say, joy in engaging with people. Um, London is, in the middle of the night, a, a, a happy place and a place where people can talk to each other, chat each other up. You know, in Hawaii, we don't really have that experience, do we? We have, they're in, you know, in big cities and particularly in Europe, um, you, can, you can talk to a stranger and, and 
uh, there, there's some gratification in that. And that's what was happening because he had his guitar with him the whole time. He, he would play songs. At first, I didn't, I didn't realize how important the songs were in this movie. But apparently, George, he had the ability, although he had limitations, which we will find out about, um, he had this ability to make up a song on the fly, uh, sure. to, you know, to, to, make the, um, to make the words of the song and, uh, and the music of the song on the fly, I mean, instantly. And, um, and the music, it wasn't bad. And she had a voice, too, and she sang with him once or twice in the movie, and he said to her, you have a pretty good voice, too. And it just brought them together. His music, uh, his, his music brought them together. So um, as they walk, and it's slowly, it's in these, um, you know, these interesting places along the river, if you will, um, in the Thames, I guess, in, in London, um, they, they begin to know each other, learn each other. And, you, and, the, and the viewer is so interested in seeing, well, are they are they going to uh, you know find each other? Are they going to have a romantic? Because it's not it's not sure that they are, but but as they reveal themselves, it's terribly the dialogue terribly honest, terribly terribly honest. Except um, he keeps throwing breadcrumbs as as to a problem that he has. I had two mo you know two particular. Um, moments that I really liked in the, in the movie. One is when he sang her a song as the as the sun came up at the top of a Ferris wheel affair, and it was it, it was really interesting that he could. He said, "Make me a song about the morning light," and he immediately uh, made her a song about the morning light, and it was it was good. It was perfect. It was poetic. All. The songs he sang were poetic. You know? and he had a talent in that regard. And the other thing that I thought was very interesting was the dance hall. I don't know if you remember, I was really wondering why there was no soundtrack on the dance hall. You realize what was going on, George? They were, they were all these people in the dance hall were dancing to, to cell phone music. Each one had his or her own music with it with a headset from their cell phone so everybody would be dancing to a different tune is that symbolic we all dance to a different tune i thought you know maybe they actually do this in europe or in london i thought what a great idea you go to a, a dance hall and there's not a sound except your feet okay and you and your 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 partner in the dance you you share a headset you know uh, one one uh, earplug uh, to me and one earplug to her, and we danced. And, and all these people, I mean, really, what's going on here? That was so interesting, and it's a statement, I suppose, of it's an allegorical statement about dancing to your own tune, but it, it's also a, a look into the London nightlife. And this was at a ridiculous hour, you know, like, what, two, three in the morning? Uh, as you said, it's a 24-hour thing. It's actually... It's not even 24 hours because it, oh, I guess it is. It's, it's from the evening time when the bar is closing until what, late in the day, the next day. And uh, okay, little by little, you like them more. Little by little, you, you realize that they're both flawed, they're both needy, um, and he's got some kind of major problem that would motivate him to try to commit suicide at the outset which he never reveals to her. And then there's the, the scene where it is all revealed. So carefully, George, carefully, tell us about that scene. I'm getting back into something that I wanted to say. Um, he reveals to her that, and there's all on his wall in his house, he's got all these little stickers, right? Um, to remind himself of things, just like I have in my notebook, to remind myself so I don't remember what to buy at the grocery. She's got all these little stickums and she sees that doesn't quite understand. He has a rare disease where early in life, it's a frontal something, I forgot the medical term, right? Where you lose, it's like Alzheimer's, just like her, her grandmother is, has got early Alzheimer's. 
he's got early Alzheimer's, right? And he's only in his 30s. And all he can, it's, it's going to get worse where he's going to be mindless, you know, at a very young age. And he doesn't want to live like that. So that's why he sees no future for himself on this earth. So he's very philosophical about where we go, you know, of course, both his parents have gone, passed away. So he's very, you know, realistic from his own perspective. It's, he's got to do something. He doesn't want to get to that point. And there's no cure for this. This, 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 this just progresses. So that's, that's when, and then she starts to understand. I mean, I may be forgetting some of the particulars, but that's when she starts to understand why he acted the way he did when she was very upset, right? Because he's a very honorable guy. He doesn't want to get her emotionally tied with him. He knows he's either going to commit suicide or die soon. And doesn't want to have sex with her because maybe she get pregnant and then, and then the kid has no father or she'll get more emotionally connected with him and doesn't want her. So that's basically what she understands about him. Really honorable guy, doesn't, not selfish, totally concerned about her needs as opposed to his own feelings. Tell me if. Yeah, well, if you if you watch the dialogue as as they continue walking and exchanging, you know, statements of you know love and commitment, which happens, it's very subtle, but it, it happens. The dialogue is really well written. Um, you realize that they they are ready to commit to each other, yes. both of them, and um, I, I mean she's ready to spend her life with him in less than twenty four hours, and and so is he. She's. She's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Understanding and emotive. She's very, she cares about people. She's a people person. And he, uh, as you say, he's an honorable, uh, caring person also, but he's got this problem. And I would go a step further. I would say he's already got the frontal, the frontal deterioration problem, it's a lo lobectomy or a lobe lobotomy, something word like that. It's, it's uh, very, and he's, he's got it already. He knows about it. Well, he has all these hundreds, hundreds of stickers around his house. He said, you know, he forgets facts. He can't hold facts in his mind. And uh, one great line in the movie is something like, what are we but our memories? Um, we have to remember all these things and he's losing these things. He's already in the disease process. He's already in the, the degradation. And so then when you realize that, you look back and you see, gee, I mean, he's a nice person. He's capable of music and poetic songs. He's capable of caring, um, but he's losing it right now. And he knows he's losing it. And that, you know, that's the saddest part. And, she doesn't know she likes him for what he presents to be, but when he tells her this, she's got to make a choice as to whether she will commit to him um, or not. And she's inclined to do that. So she's really touched. She's really, um, it's, it's a hard moment for her because she realizes he's telling her the truth. They will never have a, a, a long-term relationship. Not possible. He says to him, for example, what can they do for you? And he doesn't answer. Because they can't do anything for him. There is no medical science that can help him. <clears throat> and so at the end, you have this kind of unspoken agreement that we will stay together, care for each other as long as we can. That's our commitment. Uh, it's not like an ordinary romantic relationship at all. It's beyond that, beyond that. It's, it's not till death do we part, it's, it's till dementia do we part. <clears throat> and she's willing, she understands and she's willing, and he uh, can give her everything that he has, but he's already declined. It's just, I mean, usually it's death loss part, but he's gonna be, in, even if he lives, he's gonna be in this mindless state. And, one of the interesting, when they had that doctor talking to the, to the great grandmother, 
that's it's interesting that that scene is is really tied to his condition and, and you know so there's a play in there and when you said about his music when he met those a bunch of women you know in those costumes he was really good about you know as you said bringing up the the lyrics to this to the music right on the spot so it, you know he's good at there's parts of his brain are deteriorated but parts are still good so just like any kind of brain injury or brain disease it usually impacts one part of the brain so there's still enough emotion for him to, to be you know there with her but um, uh, he didn't want to tell him what she was studying for until way way into the movie and i recall that what she was studying for she wanted to be a nurse wasn't it that's and, one of the and there's there's a there's a there's a kind of um you know, uh, a magic about that because he he was going to need a nurse. She was, she was so tolerant, so understanding, so caring. You knew that that was the perfect choice of uh, occupation for her. But that it goes beyond that because she could help him as he as he further declined. You know, the other thing you you know you wondered about is he had a pretty nice apartment. He was trying so hard to keep everything organized and do the right thing. You know, you mentioned the, the stickies on the wall. Well, there were hundreds of them. He was trying to build a life for himself, knowing that he couldn't remember things. And so the whole wall was pasted with these, you know, yellow, yellow stickies from an office. Um, and, and, his, and the apartment was impressive. I mean, it was a nice apartment. And you wondered how he could live, you know, economically. But I guess his, his parents left him some money. He was obviously not earning a lot of money from playing guitar in a bar, um, but it was enough to allow him to, you know, organize himself. And even his uh, his, his attempt at suicide in the first five minutes of the of the movie uh, was was very systematic. Let me think. I do this. I do that because I, you know, I, I can't I can't do this anymore. I know what's going to happen to me, and I don't want to be a burden on anyone. So I'll just cut it right here. And it was um, suicide with a plan. It was a suicide where he systematically went through the options and set himself up. Um, and and it, it wasn't the ordinary attempt at suicide. Luckily, the call that she made to him about the, the guitar he had left behind interrupted him. And all of that flowed into, into this relationship they had walking the streets of London. So why does this fit? You know, George, in um, in your view of moviedom these days, it's this was a movie you made a few years ago, within what five years or so, maybe before COVID. Um, um, where does this fit in your appreciation of you know European movies, uh, English movies, uh, movies about illness, movies about romance, movies about personal um, personal evolution, personal dynamics of people who are thrown into a situation that changes their lives. Both of them, their lives changed. Um, she, she filled a need. She really, really loved him in that one day period. And he was completely committed. And they were both willing to say it to each other. Now, that is, you know, they both surrendered to each other in less than 24 hours. But where where does it fit, George, in your um, your view, your taste uh, for movies of that nature? This these, these movies and the other ones, you, type of movies you mentioned, it makes you think. It makes you think about your own life issues. It's not one of these action movies with a lot of violence and, and you know cutting up and shooting and stuff. I think these type of movies would be much better for the young people of today, Generation X and whatever millennials. Because um, for my generation, this is this is a really prof profound. These movies are prof this movie was very profound. The subtle issues that were in play, right? Um, so I liked this movie. I, I, I like this movie for what for the, the lesson it gives us, right? Uh, as opposed to all these other movies that I, I don't want to see, I don't want to see all this violence and stuff like you know shooting and killing and all that. So the movies you did, pretty much you've been picking, are very good movies about issues, you know, in our, our society, whether it's 
personal issues, world issues. I mean, the, the by the uh, 2014 Ukrainian, the Armenian genocide, how it plays into this uh, Ukrainian situation. Uh, and then all the ones that the, the two lovers, uh, what was that? Uh, we watched the two movies that uh, Julia Roberts movie and the other one with the Shailene Woodley or whatever, you know, played it. So, I mean, all of this, I like all these, you know, as, a, as I'm, gl I'm glad, except for a few that had some violence, you're not choosing those kind of things. Because, I mean, these action movies to me is just like fluff, you know, there's, there's nothing to them, you know, it just, and I think those movies are what's causing all these shooting, all these young kids, impressionable kids, you know, the, the, they don't understand, they see this, they think it's real life, right? And then they go out and blow, shooting people, you know, um, soldiers, young kids, soldiers, they go to war, they don't understand, they think you're invincible. And then everything's emotional, you know, at that age. So I like this. I like this movie. I like these other movies. I hope that answers your question. Well, in part, because I, I want to ask you to compare this movie. I don't know if you saw the Anthony Hopkins movie. It was also about Alzheimer's. It was a real winner. Um, it played yeah. uh, maybe a year a year ago or so ago. It was about... it, Jay. That was uh, the the father. The father, yeah. Yes. And, I... uh, do you, you remember that movie? It's worth yes, mentioning right. that movie in this context. And that movie was not a happy movie. Um, that uh, the relationships were deteriorated. Uh, he was getting worse every time you looked. Uh, it was a, a tragic movie, uh, and there, there wasn't really, I must say, not a lot of caring. It was also an English movie. Um, so how do you compare that? A, which one do you like better and why? Well, you know, as much as I like this one, I like the other one better because it actually showed his inner, the, you know, the protagonist's inner view of what he was seeing. You didn't really see Will Fletcher, you know, except those stickers, you know, you didn't see and I don't think his, his disease had gotten to the point yet where it was really, it was getting more serious, but, you know, it, it went, went down from there. So I like the father better uh, for, for the realism. And uh, even though this plus is on this one too, the pluses here are the relationship that he had with her, you know, uh, with Eve. But I like that other one, but there were more players involved in, one of the things and a whole family it wasn't just two people yeah this was this was a uh, you know sort of a microscopic look at two people and their relationship uh, and it, you know it was uh, at the end it was a, a statement of, it was a statement of love not not deterioration i mean although deterioration was involved but i, I want to dwell on one of the points you made a, a, a minute ago movies are more than these days the art because movies have an effect on you just like the violence, vengeance, and hate movies that we don't like too much, um, you know, because they have, they do, we know they have an effect on us, and probably the, the effect on a national, global basis, because everybody watches these violence and vengeance movies around the world. Um, you know, the effect is a bad effect. The effect makes you think that violence is okay, and justifies vengeance. You know, if you if you hate and you you need vengeance. Um, then the violence is justified. This is a terrible message. And this is what we're getting. Every movie has a lesson. Every movie has a takeaway. All of art has a movie uh, and a takeaway. Okay. And, and it, we always compare it with our own lives. We always learn whether we realize it or not from the movie. So if I compare these two, the father, okay, um, and forget me not, I come out ahead on forget me not. And I'll tell you why. Because, because of that effect, the learning effect. Uh, you learn from Forget Me Not that you can love somebody, really love them, uh, at least for a while, even while they're degenerating. Uh, and it touches you. It, it enriches your life. Um, Eve's life was enriched um, by, by riding it down uh, with Will. In the case of uh, the Anthony Hopkins, the father movie, you learn a lot about Alzheimer's. You learn about the dark side of Alzheimer's. You learn about the, you know, that sort of the, 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 the ship is shoving off, you know, and he's going into oblivion. Um, but that's not a happy lesson. And there's not too much to, 
you know, positive to learn from that movie, you, you learn that it's a really bad experience, which it is. But if, if I'm talking to 300 million Americans, I'd rather tell them about the love part. Mm -hmm. I'd rather leave them with that takeaway. than the takeaway is, uh, you know, that, that people with Alzheimer's, you know, are a real problem. Yeah, I, I understand your point too. Yeah. But. Anyway, so what what rating? I don't remember what we rated the father at, but what what rating would you give uh, Forget Me Not? Pretty high. I have a few issues, so give it a nine. Some of the reviewers also you know, felt there were some issues, but I'll give it a nine. I, I mean, I, the, 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 you see London only smoggy, smoggy London. You know, some of those scenes just depressed me, you know, but that, that Ferris wheel thing, that, 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 that scene was really nice that they were in that Ferris wheel, and he sings the song to it. Yeah, I'll give it a nine. You may like, you may, you're probably going to give it a 10, but I, I give it a nine. I will give it a 10. Um, I'll give it a 10 because I think it's a movie that you learn from, a movie that touches you. It certainly touched me and a movie that is filled with the symbolism and breadcrumbs about about what's really going on here, a movie that you have to watch twice to, to pick up on, to, to get the whole message. And, uh, and I realize now that, you know, as is the case in so many good movies, that the, 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 the filmmaker is trying to tell you stuff in subtle fashion. And um, so there's, there's another dimension to it. I like movies with more than one dimension. This movie had more than one dimension. So George, I'm really enjoying this uh, movie review process with you. Uh, we'll do another one in a couple of weeks. We'll try to avoid any vengeance of violence, if you don't mind. And, uh, and I will suggest the movies to you in the next few days. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.